So if you have the bars. Roll back a bit in the clamps. <laughs> so, okay. not that much, obviously, but like that. It makes the bike really comfortable on the street. There's not too much reach. It's really easy, especially you know, for shorter guys. But the problem is that if you have the bars too far back, when you stand, it's hard to get the pressure into the front tire as effectively to create the traction for the front end. And it can also decrease your stability. So imagine if you're standing and your bars are here, you don't have as much strength as you would if they were out in there. When you hit those soft patches of sand or mud, it's harder to stabilize your upper body. Also, by changing the angle of the handlebars, you affect how the bike behaves as well. So if you have the bars rolled back a long way, the bike becomes very stable, very slow to steer, tracks straight in a straight line. If you have the bars rolled too far forwards, the opposite is true. The bike becomes less stable, more responsive, turns quicker, but more inclined to head shake and more inclined to hold the front end in the, in the sand. Sit or stand on the bike, and wherever your hand naturally points to, that's where people put the lever. The problem you have, the lower you have your lever, the less engagement you have to this part of your palm, and the easier it is to slide off the bars. So the only way to stop yourself sliding off the bars is to hold on tight. Lots of tension in your wrists, tension in your forearms, tension in your shoulders, and you start biking the bike. This bike's 160 horsepower. It's going to win. So we need to keep soft and relaxed hands as much as possible. If my hands are like that and I relax, I'm going to fall off the bars. With your lever up and there more, it naturally puts that part of your hand behind the bars. You can completely relax your hand and still stay really strong and stable on the bike. So what we're looking for is if that's parallel to the ground, we want the levers just slightly downhill of parallel to the ground. And this will make a big, uh, big increasing your ability to relax your hands, relax your forearms, relax your riding. Seated position, let's just sit, chilling out, sitting at the back of the seat, cruising along. The problems we have with this, uh, your weight's too far back on the bike. So it's really important that we keep the weight distributed evenly front to rear, so there's pressure on both tires, creating the traction, creating the control. In a perfect world, so like on the 690, we want to be sitting basically over the foot pegs. On the big bikes, that's where we end up sitting about here, which isn't very comfortable. So we need to be as far forward in the seat as possible. A lot of people think that as soon as you get off road on these bikes, you have to stand up. So it is possible to tilt the corner of these bikes quite well sitting down. And a good rule of thumb, a good way to think about it, if the corner is less than, say, about 45 degrees, it's still okay to sit down. If the corner is greater than 45 degrees, you need to be standing up on the foot pegs to get the weight of it through the boards to uh, make the corner properly. Does that make sense? So yeah. imagine if we're riding along, it's that sort of a corner, you can still happily do it sitting down. Um, really good way of, of uh, saving your energy. When your elbows are down and your hips are back, it's very, very hard to stabilize your upper body. So, Imagine as I'm riding along, I hit a bump. Really, really hard. Mm. Stop Chris messing me around. Okay, please. Yeah. From there to there. Yeah. Go on. Nothing you can do to mess me around. Go get into it. <laughs> so imagine we're riding along the trail and we hit a soft patch of sand. If you're in here, oh, it's a big deal, big crash. Yeah. If you're in that ready position, whatever, just carry along. Ooh. shoulders nice and low and pushing your hips back so your hips should be right out the back of the bike if you just lean back like that you run out of arms if you push your hips back you can get your weight a lot further back get that triangle a lot lower and you have significantly more control so 
we've talked a lot about trying to keep your hands soft as much as we can. So when you're cornering, especially in the, the tighter stuff and the slippery stuff, we want to be trying to leave the handlebars alone as much as we can. The mistake a lot of people make is they try and use too much counter steer to put the bikes into the turn. So imagine if you want to turn left, they'll push the left hand handlebar away, the bikes are naturally falls into the turn. But imagine when it's muddy and slippery, it shouldn't be too hard to imagine today. If we've got to turn left to turn right and turn right to turn left, there's a lot of inputs into the front tire and the front tire is going to start sliding around. Imagine we've got rocks, tree roots, sand, all that sort of stuff, the situation gets even worse. So as much as we can, we want to be trying to turn the bike using your foot pegs and using your body weight. So if I want the bike to turn to the left, I'll momentarily relax my outside right hand foot peg, flop my weight, sorry, right, there we go, flop my weight down, push the bike into the turn. Once the bike set into the corner, I need to get my weight directly over those tires again to create traction. So keeping my knees locked in, I swing through my hips, push my ass to the outside, relax my inside leg and flop all my weight down to the outside foot peg with my head out over that contact patch of the front tire. The biggest difference with this technique, why you get more grip, why you get more traction, why you can corner more aggressively, is you can get your body weight further forwards. So in a perfect world for cornering sitting down, we'd need to sit about here, like we talked about. On the adventure bike, when you're standing, that's exactly where your weight ends up. That's why when the corners get tighter, when the terrain gets more aggressive, you need to stand up to get that weight through the board to create that pressure for the front tire.